Singapore for the second quarter of this year registered a contraction of 7.8% annualized, mainly due to volatility in the pharmaceutical sector and a greater than expected slowdown in services. However, seen in the context of a resilient Chinese economy and better US data, the slowdown should be nothing but. And growth for the full year sh should still range between 5 to 7%. In China, recent GDP data surprised on the upside and finally put to rest fears of a hard landing. The economy accelerated 2.2% on quarter from 2.1% the quarter before. Growth came from low-cost housing, investment moving inland, and the opening of high-speed rails, helping domestic consumption expand healthily. On-month growth for retail sales surprised on the upside, as did industrial production. More importantly, Inflation has a strong chance of having peaked year on year and in sequential terms. For one, low base comparisons with last year will fade from July. Sequentially, although some risk from high pork prices remain, core inflation registered 0% on month, which means excluding volatile food prices, inflation may have stopped feeding on itself. We expect China to finish the year above 9% firmly and its import appetite to continue growing faster than exports as consumption expands. As for the US, although the recent jobs report was very disappointing, we note that most jobs lost were from the government sector and construction, over leveraged sectors that continue downsizing. The private sector continues to add jobs, especially in services and durables manufacturing. We continue to expect jobs to be added. Unemployment insurance claims have renewed their downtrend and we are close to going below the 400,000 mark, which is the dividing line between a job mar market improving and not. Looking forward, new orders for durable goods and capital goods, which have a good track record of predicting future growth, all continue to put in strong on-month results. Housing is also improving as month supply for new homes has whittled down to six months. We therefore continue to believe that stocks want to grind higher on earnings and the economy. However, macro risks have emerged that may cut short this bull market if they go full-blown. An initial French plan to roll over Greek debt into longer maturities was branded a selective default by rating agencies. As such, the plan was dropped and markets panicked. Italian and Spanish debt was sold down and it seems like the crisis is spreading beyond Greece. LIBOR OIS spreads have also started trending higher, indicating that contagion is now seriously on the cards. New proposals to finance Greece to buy back its debt, now trading at half price, is the best plan we have heard and are hoping it succeeds. Not to stop there, US Treasuries also face downgrade prospects if their politics fails to produce an agreement to raise the debt ceiling. Based on both these macro risks, especially Europe, we recommend staying defensive for the near term despite having a bull market view, at least until these issues resolve. Thank you.